Welcome back to the Sound of Good Health podcast. Today we're talking with William Sturgeon again. He is the owner of Restored Strength in Marshall. So he recently did a post and a video kind of talking about trauma and how he kind of turned his life around with coming out of a bunch of bullshit from his youth to now owning a gym. He has multiple college degrees. He just graduated from massage therapy school. He's got employees in his own business. Like he's overcome a lot. <laughs> it's a little bit <laughs> style. We're going to figure out how this goes. I have done a previous podcast with a person about dissociative identity disorder. And it was really interesting just talking about how the, in that particular case, age seven to nine is when her trauma happened. And that was what kind of formed her. And you wrote about after experiencing trauma, your brain kind of restructures itself and that includes changing your beliefs. So you want to touch on that with how your beliefs and that kind of loop of dealing with shit? Yeah, dude. Uh, number one, and this is weird. This is really weird. Oftentimes, a lot of people who do have trauma, uh, typically around age seven and eight is when it begins to kind of like, that's an escalating part where a lot of people I've met have had that. Um, and it, it just, it's a weird common thing is that age. Um, so when the brain experiences trauma, trauma being event that reshapes the way your view of the world is. So for example, um, let's take in perception, uh, you believe that the world around you is safe and there's no harm that could be done in a vehicle because you're driving uh and during winter you're driving and you hit a uh, spot of black ice and you spin out you get in a car accident uh in that moment your brain is perceiving a false sense of reality so prior to that experience your brain was saying hey i'm safe to drive you hit black ice, you spun out, you got in a car accident, you got hurt, that's your trauma. So then your brain begins to change because it had to learn how to adapt to a new world that it never experienced before. And sometimes the experience itself may be so painful that your, your body blacks out, it shuts down. So then you, you don't really comprehend what happened. Um, so that in a nutshell is trauma your brain has a idea of what the world is like and then something happens and it changes it significantly depending on the experience um does that does that make sense yeah absolutely and you're just making me think about like as a parent or just as a, a guy go, growing up or whatever you got to balance safety because you need that sense of safety to even just function in the world, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. But then you, how do you go about balancing that baseline safety versus like toughening up? And I know Jordan Peterson talked about like, it's just kind of that gradual exposure to evil. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the thing that I will talk about from my own per perspective is, uh, in my own experience is the, the world the people that I know, I make false assumptions of, and I'm wrong oftentimes, and I'm okay with that. So if I'm wrong, I always love to be corrected because I want to be informed correctly. Um, but for me, when I hear people talk about, oh, people need to toughen up, people need to be harder, this and that, uh, I stop and I have to bite my tongue because I'm like, well, what's your definition of toughen up? Mm -hmm. What's your definition of hard? Because I'll share with you my experiences and see if you would be able to live through them. See if you'd be able to even fathom the concept of physically being violent with someone for the sake of power, for the sake of survival. Like to me, it took me a while to, and like, this is a new concept to me just about a year ago is that in other schools, apparently and in other towns, it's, abnormal for there to be fights that was new to me that fucking blew my mind because where i grew up it's what we would do mm -hmm. you would always there's always violence so when people say toughen up and it's like oh you're struggling with this and struggling with that it's like 
well, A, begin to see where your, per, your, your perspective is coming from. B, uh, what is your definition of hard? Because I'll share with you, like I said in the beginning, I'll share with you mine and somebody else will have something completely different. So I, what I've learned from being a person who has been always, you got to be strong, you got to be uh, on top of it, you got to be this and that, toughen up. Um, for me, it made me an angry, bitter person. And it was through challenging my own thoughts and viewing it from a perspective of love and acceptance and kindness where my life began to improve. But it was the mentality of being involved in street uh, activities and, you know, all the other shit I was in. But uh, so, yeah, it's something that I, I think about, right? That That is like, well, what is the definition of tough? What are you using it for? How far are you willing to go? And what are you even doing with it? Yeah. Yeah. I really like that with, I get frustrated since I have the martial arts background when the way I word it is when people don't have an appreciation or understanding of violence and they <laughs> use that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, I don't know. It, it makes me sick. Like I remember reading about the since working in journalism, like the first weekend of lockdowns, we had domestic abuse reports up like a bajillion percent. It's just, oh, shit. Uh, it's, it's hard. And, right. that, yeah. and that's, I, here's what I'm appreciative of about those situations is my, <laughs> dude, like my heart gets filled with joy when I hear people say that they've never experienced violence or that they've never had to be violent because I'm like you have this you have this level of innocence to yeah. you that is still there so you have a perspective of the world that is far more kind and accepting than what mine has been because I've had to restructure my beliefs and my views of the world to be more loving and accommodating where prior to it was uh everyone's a threat i'm going to be a bigger threat to them mm -hmm. i want to protect myself because somebody hurt me and i never wanted that to happen again and uh so when i get to you know meet people who have never had those experiences or never done those things a part of me fills with joy because they have that innocence still yeah and i i did I went through private school for most of my school. I did have two years of public school and uh, there was definitely a, a, a divide with, like you're talking about just the, not that the private school kids had no bad things ever, but right. it's just, it's just a, a different atmosphere. The concept of like, so you, you've been through shit and not you specifically, but just a person has been through a bunch of shit, mm -hmm. but you also, to heal and move forward, you need a level of vulnerability and that requires a lot of trust and bravery too. And so it's just that interesting uh, balanced dichotomy. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you did start to touch on it with the self-love and acceptance. And it's like, you kind of have to, do you, do you think you have to start there before you can start probably externally with people? Uh, I think for me uh, was, I lived a little bit of a conflicted life where I was very kind and gentle, but then also like, it's like Jekyll and Hyde, right? There is also this other side of me that's like way more aggressive, way more assertive, way more uh, mean and all these other things. And for me, it was a matter of, uh, I just got to a point in my mental health that I was just depleted. I was burnt out of work. I was full-time in school. I was, involved in like codependency. I was uh, just not healed from all the traumas that I have experienced. So I had all these uh, behaviors that I wasn't aware of. And it was until my business partner uh, helped me understand that. And just a matter of my own mental health just being depleted that I was like, okay. So uh, it was uh, a breakdown on my birthday that led me to go into therapy uh, so that I could heal and address these things. And then uh, in June, I kind of, uh, 
had an episode where I felt like I was really acting out of character and it was just a weird situation for myself that I was like, okay, there's something here that I need to address. And I don't recommend people to do this. Number one, because I, I, you got to be kind of a fucked up individual to do it this way. And I've learned it. So that's why I did it this way. But I went to the root cause of my pain. Mm -hmm. So I went to my very first traumatic experience and understood why I was so afraid of pain and why I was so protective over myself and others and why I was so reactive. Um, and it was through uh, understanding that I was afraid of pain because of bees. I was terrified of bees because I got a fucking stung in the eye by a hornet that fucked me up uh and i was like that was always my fear so i was like why am i afraid of bees well i'm afraid of pain why am i afraid of pain and i had to look back and think of when my first time i experienced pain was uh and that's i was out in nature i was out there for four and a half hours with a pen and paper and i just wrote down and journaled and just like the floodgates opened up and I just saw everything for the first time. And so for me to be where I'm at here saying that you need love and kindness and acceptance and all these other radical things that I a year ago would not believe in, I had to begin by humanizing myself mm -hmm. and asking myself, who hurt you? What hurt you? Who did this to you that made you this way? Uh, and then understanding where that root cause was and then starting from that building up to all the other things and it again not the best way don't fucking recommend it but I encountered over a hundred plus traumatic experience that I could vividly remember and recall uh, so for me I had to undo all these things and uh, it began with acknowledging that the behavior that I was involved in wasn't something I agreed with. The way that I was mentally and physically feeling was complete shit. Uh, and I had to ask for help. And once I was getting help, I began to understand that I was avoiding pain. And once I understood that I was afraid of pain, I went to confront it. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know what, fuck you, let's do this. And uh, I'm here now. <laughs> Yeah, well, and it's interesting you say like you don't recommend going to the root cause of pain and like in talking with other counselors, well, not that you're a counselor, but you know, um, and it just seems like it's some, like the, there's also the book Feeding Your Demons that talks about like the thing you want to meditate on or try to think about it should be the thing you're most afraid of or like oh not that that's probably what you need to address so mm -hmm. but on the other hand you're doing this by your well were you doing counseling at the same time yeah i would meet with my therapist like bi-weekly and so like i she was like william you're my favorite client because you only spend one hour with me and you come back with weeks worth of work <laughs> done because I explored it. I went out yeah. there to go and find these answers. Now, I do say find the root cause of things, but for certain people who don't have the, I don't want to say it's strength because it is one bit strength, but like if you're not ready for that amount of pain, mm -hmm. then like don't go to, go with little things. It's just like weightlifting, right? Yeah. Like don't dive into 300 weight. pounds or whatever yeah right like so that way you build up the tolerance for your stress it's basically stress development where you're able to adjust to moderate amount of stress so that you can begin to look at these things deeper and then you can be like oh at four years old i was a witness of this act of violence right and then it could be like i'm ready to hear that i'm ready to see that i'm ready to understand that yeah. other people are not even ready to even talk about what made them upset an hour ago. How the fuck are you going to get them to talk about what they went through as a child? Right. So yeah. for me, I went to the bare alls. Like I'm that guy who does shit sprinting downhill. It's who I am. I do things backwards. I wish my brain works differently, but that's what I do. And then I do a little shit afterwards. Yeah. 
Um, so for, for viewers, we'll just clarify that neither one of us are trained therapists. Uh, we both do counseling, but if you do like we both go to therapists, not, yeah. <laughs> not offering service. Um, so anyway, so if you need help, uh, it's very, we both, I'm assuming we both strongly recommend counseling, like getting the help you need, but you also need to do the work outside of that because they're not going to fix all your problems. Oh, no, they're just going to ask you really good questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely like, I like getting that outside perspective. And um, so one, one, one kind of pivoting here, um, you talked about you and I, I'm the same way, like I have no problem wanting to be corrected. Like I, I'm not afraid of being wrong because I'm, I'm always willing to learn, but I'm just thinking about most people don't want that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why it's like weird to me. Because they're so full of pride and egotism. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a vulnerability of being wrong. Like, here's what I say. Uh, you know, who's never wrong? Psychopaths. Fucking people who are like insane because like I'm wrong all the time about shit and I'm okay with it. Cause I fucking, if I'm right all the time, A, that says something wrong about me, B, that's kind of a psychopathic trait. Like the way you can grow and understand shit is by being wrong. You don't learn shit by being right. You learn shit by being wrong because you know what doesn't work. Yeah. Well, and the, there's a really good, it's basically a book, but article, uh, way but why Tim Urban, he talks about the four levels of thinking. So at the top, you have thinking like a scientist, which is like you're, you're not choosing a side or an outcome, but you're trying to just discover the truth. And then below that, there's a sports fan thinking like a sports fan where you're, you're kind of, you want the results to be towards this side, but you'll still be, you'll still accept reality. All the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And then there's thinking like a lawyer and that is you're starting with a set outcome or belief and then you're looking for everything that supports it mm. and then you're thinking like a zealot below that and that's like anything in opposition to what you think or believe is literally a bucket of shit and evil and whatever so uh dude yeah that's yeah i avoid those type of people because yeah. I, I don't like being around those people right and we all like everybody does all four in some topic, some aspect, we all fluctuate, but it's just awareness of like where you're biased is a huge thing to help mitigate that. So. And it, it's nice because like, there's some people who carry more of those traits than others. They'll, yeah. they'll favor one over the other. Um, and uh, I, I think the one thing that I also do too that's different is I admit my ignorance openly yeah. immediately i'm like i don't read the i don't follow the news i don't i I'm like i should and i should be like up to date with like politics and shit but like i don't give a fuck because i have other things that i want to worry about and like other people do and i'm like cool you look stressed about it i, I i'm good yeah well and I say this as someone who's put four years into journalism. I didn't watch the news before and I don't watch it now. <laughs> uh, Hell yeah, dude, that's cool. And it was interesting just like, even, even when I was in journalism, like did I watch other news stuff? Not really, unless I was forced to. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and it's like, now that I've got the, the inside like I know how the hot dogs are made, or however you want to work. Yeah, it. you're just like, eh. yeah. Um, but Mark Manson talks about like you got to think of like, well, you said it too. Like, you have finite energy, and does knowing what's going on from a imperfect source, uh, how does that improve your life? <laughs> no, it just it it just makes people stressed out, and it's like cool man you can go and do that i'm gonna worry about what's going on in my life and in my community and worry about that yeah. flipping back into the trauma stuff sure. uh, so we're thinking do people well 
do people need to hit a rock bottom point to make a change? Because it, it seems like that's the common thread through a lot of people's stories. But obviously it's like, you know, if you can stop banging your head into the thing, you'll feel better. Right. <laughs> Dude, Alex, one thing I appreciate about you, dude, you have amazing, like, analogies and metaphors for shit. Like, I love that. You're really creative with that. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Uh, but, like, okay, so, like, I have said this to plenty of people, uh, but everybody will listen when they're wanting to listen, when they're ready to listen, right? So, you know, I always say you don't have to hit rock bottom in order to change. You don't. Like you can change immediately right now in this very moment. If you're not happy with the behavior that you're doing, you can just stop doing it. And the way you can do that is by asking yourself a few quick questions is uh, number one, who taught you this? So like, for example, if you're somebody who says I have to eat all the dinner off my plate, otherwise, I mm -hmm. am a bad boy or whatever the fuck it is. Well, who taught you that? Oh, my parents. Is it helping you now? No. Okay, don't do it. <laughs> that simple. Yeah. That fucking simple, right? Because, it, and then they're like, but, and I was like, well, wait, 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 wait. Is it helping you? No. Okay, so why the fuck are you going to do it? I, do you do shit that doesn't help you? No. Boom. <laughs> fucking, who taught you it? That's all you have to know is who taught you it? Is it helping you? No. Okay, cool. Well, fucking replace it with whatever you want because you're the adult now. Yeah. And another one is, is this true? Yeah. Is this true? And also what value is this holding? Because it's like my parents said you have to clean your plate and it's like, okay, they're teaching me not to be wasteful. But also as a child, I understand that I had specific caloric needs and my parents had their own specific values of what they thought was important. And guess what? I'm a fucking mature adult who can make my own rules because I pay my own fucking bills uh, and live my own life. So might as well make my own rules to live by instead of uh, things that no longer serve me. Yeah, things that I, I like, I wanna, I'll come back to that phrase, things no longer serve me in a second. I just wanna say like a parenting thing I think I read and I, I don't have kids yet, so. This could be me talking out of my ass, but uh, <laughs> a parenting thing I, I read and we did growing up was, I, I don't remember when it started, but basically the kid can take however much food they want instead of just you handing them a plate of stuff. Uh, and it's not a perfect system, but over time they should be able to gauge it, I guess. Right. Oh, holding on to beliefs that no longer serve you. So one that scan like I've, I've got a lot of those <laughs> <laughs> or i should I, re, I should say i remember overcoming them <laughs> I'll, I'll that phrasing way. that nice yeah. um so like and i think a big one is just like i'll just say social anxiety was a big one mm. overcoming shyness uh like yeah just the world's not out to get you uh, maybe certain people are, but, you know, obviously just cut them out of your life. <laughs> and yeah, for, the, for, the most sure. part, for the most part, people care way more about themselves and they're not plotting how to get you. you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's also, just intrusive thoughts, man. Everybody has them. Yeah. Well, and something I was listening to Eckhart Tolle this morning and uh, something that he said, and I, I realized this early, way early in life, I don't know why or what, but it's like, there's a difference between you and what your brain is telling you. Uh, and that can be like negative thoughts or like that stuff we were just talking about, like, is this true? Who taught you? Like, is it you talking? Is it your brain talking? Is it your mom? Uh, you know? So, I, uh, I like that you learned that early on. I didn't learn that until like at least three months ago. So <laughs> so like holy fuck man that's nice but uh and you're so, dirty. the way that uh in the article i wrote uh in the rkc was how uh our brain and trauma goes together with what's happening so the science is broken down by a book called unfuck your brain yeah. uh and it's a great book man really good started it like i'm intending to get to it I've, 
yeah dude it's good it's good so in, in the in the book the author explains it very simplistic you have your prefrontal cortex then you have your amygdala and then you have your brainstem your prefrontal cortex is your i use mark manson's thinking brain because yeah. you're thinking and you're observing and you're able to determine how your behavior is your outcome by logic. Okay, so that's the prefrontal cor cortex right here. So behind that is your amygdala, Mark Manson's uh, feeling brain, right? Like how you feel. So you're your amygdala is interpreting what your prefrontal cortex is seeing. And then your amygdala sends signals to the brain stem, which then decides what happens, okay? So for example, uh, I was afraid of bees. So my prefrontal cortex, my visual senses would see a bee, my amygdala would get freaked out. So then it would tell my brainstem to go into sympathetic breathing, tense, oh fuck, I'm gonna freak out. And it's a matter of saying, hey, amygdala, shut the fuck up because pre Prefrontal cortex is wrong, so then brainstem has to chill out. Uh, and, and so what you can do when you are feeling intrusive thoughts, things that aren't true, things that are making you feel shitty, uh, begin by saying, shut the fuck up, amygdala. Yeah. Uh, next thing is like, what am I feeling? What am I seeing? And then the best way to shut that brain off, I learned this from a friend who told me this a couple weeks ago, but rubbing the back of your head, starting from the base of the skull, going down the neck, um, and just rubbing that as you're breathing. Uh, he just said that that helps with his anxiety. What he didn't know was that that's where your brainstem is. So you're stimulating the brainstem to go into parasympathetic breathing to relax you. As soon as you do that, you shut the fuck up amygdala. Your prefrontal cortex goes, it's a B it's not going to sting me. Right. So, uh, that was a long answer to what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> but does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and we were talking before we started recording, um, about like, I used an analogy with, if your brain's spiraling out of control or fighting you or like a walkie talkie. And mm. if you're transmitting something and for me, like music, is a good one and that can be like non-instrumental is usually better for not having a conscious thinking mind like your brain is just still you're not thinking um so the, the walkie-talkie if you're if the music is transmitting something it's jamming the other end so your brain can't talk and tell you all this shit that's screwing you up yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that again that's such a cool analogy yeah so um so that's what's been helpful for me on top of all the other like uh one of my martial arts coaches talked about for pre-fight nerves just taking the big deep breaths and hold it for a second and then um relax and then that kind of switches you back into that parasympathetic too instead of like i gotta fight oh god oh shit <laughs> yeah you get all freaked out so, um, and, uh, you know, the, the thing in the book, too, it's said, and I've read this in many other books about uh, just dealing with anxiety, dealing with emotions. Mm -hmm. Dude, take, breathe out, pause for two seconds, start slowly breathing in for three, breathe out for four or five. And like, they're like, you'll read this everywhere. You'll see this everywhere. And it says it works. And people are like, okay, what else is there? But There's nothing else, cool. asshole. Go yeah. and just do the breathing stuff. Yeah, it's like the same bullshit basics of all the health. Drink more water and <laughs> sleep. It's the shit that we all keep saying. It's like how other how how else are we going to tell you the same thing? Yeah, from for viewers like William and I have both worked through shit in our lives and studied psychology and done therapy and all kinds of stuff, and that's how we're kind of able to figure this stuff out and hopefully give you something useful. <laughs> Honestly, that's what it's all about, dude, is sharing information that helps people get out of shitty, shitty spots. You yeah. don't have to be a therapist. You don't have to be a trainer. You don't have to be fucking anybody. But if you have something that helps another person in a healthy way, why not share it? Don't be an ass, man. Share it. We're all, we're all humans. 
We're yeah. all struggling with the same anxieties and the same stressors. Stop trying to be so fucking special and different from everybody. You all drink water. You all need sleep. We all eat food. We all struggle. So like, here's what I tell people. And like, I, I'm a big person on this is, is autonomy. Your ability to express yourself in any way you want without it affecting somebody else. Like for me, I, I used to refrain from not swearing because of uh, people thinking it's unprofessional or makes them uncomfortable or whatever it may be. Well, uh, that's not who I am, dude. I'm sorry, but that's not who I am. Like I'm who I am and I'm not going to apologize anymore for it, but I, I'll apologize for my ignorance. I'll be there for that. I admit that. And I'll respect you in, in a way that respects myself first, because I can't allow myself to be disrespected by myself following somebody else's rules that may not either I agree with. Because when you think about rules, when you really break it down, it's just a value. What are you valuing? How are you wanting to set a boundary on it? And where do you go from there? And for me, uh, autonomy is a boundary that I, I don't break. So I want everybody to express themselves in a way that they're best suited for themselves without it hurting other people. The same way I apply what I do. So I always tell people, here's what I do. Here's what works for me. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, I don't give a shit (laughs) because at the end of the day, it's about what you want to do. And I'm just here to support you doing that as long as it's not at the cost of somebody else. And if it's at the cost of your own health, that's a consequence you're choosing to accept if you know what your consequences are. And it's okay. It's absolutely okay. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to touch on that you brought up was just expressing yourself without hurting others and Mm -hmm. one one thing that I I read I want to say it was in Guerrilla Mindset or it might have been Mark Manson but it was that you're not responsible for other people's feelings and I think I've struggled with that because it's like I think you have to just apply the asshole rule to that like (laughs) okay well like I used to struggle with that and I still do sometimes don't get me wrong but Um, I think that when you begin to think about it this way uh, is you're not in control of how other people feel. You have no control over that. Even though if you use words that may make a person feel a different way, that's, dude, my shirt is black. How does that make you feel? Nothing, right? It's just fucking a black shirt, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's the same thing with an action or words I use is, okay, what meaning am I giving to this? You know? So like, if I'm expressing my truth to you, Alex, where I'm like, Hey dude, I really hate ranch dressing, which I do. And you're like super big advocate for it. I'm going to be like, Hey dude, I'm glad you love ranch. I don't, you can eat all the ranch you want. And I won't say anything because I don't care. And we can leave it at that. But let's say your feelings get up you get hurt and you get upset because you're like, why the fuck don't you like ranch, William? Well, I can explain to you, but that's not going to change it because you want me to feel the same way you do, right? Well, again, it goes back to trying to manipulate another person to feel a certain way so that you feel better. Stop and make yourself feel better about anything you do so that you don't have the weight of somebody else's emotions being projected onto you so you have to be comfortable with your choices you have to be comfortable with your boundaries you have to be comfortable with knowing that you may upset other people and you need to understand where where that goes because why are you trying to uh not offend other people like there's a difference indirectly like okay like that's unexpected let's talk about it but if you're directly then that's a problem but more than often than not it's a matter of i accidentally or indirectly hurt you you were upset here's what i can do for you is i want to listen to you tell me what happened right but i'm not going to fix you i'm not going to make you feel better but i'll make sure that you feel heard yeah and if it's something that my behavior did that impacted you uh and you're somebody who I love and I care for, I'll make amendments to it. If you're some person on the street and you're like, hey, I don't like your tattoos, well, you know, go fuck yourself. I don't care. Right. 
Yeah. So it sounds like for me, it's a keep working on boundaries thing. Yeah. And it's okay to have those. I like, like, absolutely, man. Like it's okay. You need to take care of yourself first every fucking day. You're the priority. And I say this to everybody because you're not going to be able to pour from an empty cup. When people think of helping other people, it's great to do that, but not from a place that's self-sacrificial where mm-hmm. you're putting yourself last, where you're like dying on the, the, the sword of pride to make sure you did that. Like, no man, chill out, take care of yourself first so that you can take care of others later. Yeah, uh, I'll say I, I, I have awareness of the problem and I'm working on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so that's, you know, that's where you start. And, uh, absolutely and, and then also change the the way that you're viewing the problem like is it the problem that other people are getting upset and you're afraid of that maybe or maybe it's a different problem so that you may have a different answer like maybe it's not that maybe it's that you're afraid of conflict well I think for me I feel like for me a, a big factor is I fear that they're going to hold on to it and use it against me in the future like people hold on to grudges mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if that's because I remember stuff and not that I hold it against people necessarily, but I at least remember the, the hurt or whatever. So has that happened to you? Has anybody done that to you? I'm trying to remember, honestly, like I've, I've had this thought like journaling and whatever, like it, I'm assuming it happened if mm-hmm. I'm afraid of it because it probably mm-hmm. happened in the past and I can't remember, uh, mm-hmm. So and here's another follow-up question. And like, dude, at any point, just be like, William, let's move past this. But I love <laughs> this fine. shit, dude, right? Yeah. So then my next question is, uh, how did that make you feel? Probably something like hurt or frustrated. And it's like, I, you know, that was yesterday or however mm-hmm. long. And like, how long do you hold on to stuff, you know? Right. So like you felt hurt, kind of like surprised surprised is probably a good one right because then you're like hey i felt safe with you uh and now all of a sudden this thing happened right i feel like surprise just hit, i feel like you're hitting the nail on the head yeah nobody likes being surprised because we as humans like having equilibrium which is mm-hmm. that sense of just calm right and for you you have a skill set alex of uh when you are surprised I would imagine that your skills kick in where it's martial arts and you're like, oh, fuck, I got to be vigilant and I'm going to have to fight. And that's not the case in that scenario. So when somebody gets upset, it may be that uh, you are afraid of them holding that over you later and it being a surprise to you. And you're like, I don't want to hurt this person. And I'm not quite sure yet how I need to respond in this situation because I wasn't prepared for it. Yeah. And the tan, tan, uh, related to this, that's interesting is I've had in, uh, I'll just say intense conflict moments where I've wanted to have the, the, the fight response and mm-hmm. I've controlled it. Like I haven't been in a street fight since yeah. I started MMA training, which to me is a good thing because that's not the most socially acceptable response. And it's, it's just interesting to think about like you know, fighting for the right reasons, like a justified. And, you know. and it's a matter of like understanding your, your values, your core values as a human. And like, here's the thing that I've learned is for me, my fear of conflict was, I know how far I'm willing to go. Cause I've been there fucking time and time again. Like I'll go that mile. I'm that motherfucker who does that shit. It's who I've been. So I always have to regulate that anytime a conflict arises because but now I understand that that's not the person I am anymore nor is it the values I hold so in a situation where I'm feeling that there may be confrontation or conflict I use all the words I can and I ask all the questions and I stop and I understand the situation because here's the thing I've I've been through those situations and most times it's that somebody's upset because they weren't heard or a value that they hold was offended. So let's understand the situation, let's address it and go. And then it makes it easier because then for me as an individual, I can have a conversation. I love conversing, I love being able to understand things. 
Um, and I know I have a good skill set too. But if I'm going to be realistic, you got to look at Carl Jung's work and look at the shadow side. Yeah. It's about polarity. The opposite of my kindness and my welcomingness is I've been a person who's been the opposite. I've been a person who's been like immediately enraged, immediately ready to fight. And uh, I know that that person no longer has control over me, but I know that that person has existed. And that's why I'm this person today, because I choose not to be that person. Yeah. Well, and the, the one word that stood out for me in your, your post was just the word peace. And I felt like when I was a teenager, the way I worded it was just being angry at the world. And partway through college, I realized that I didn't feel that way anymore. Yeah. So. And it's, that's all that everybody wants, dude. Everybody just wants to feel good. Everybody just wants to be loved and accepted. Like yeah. when I was trying to be, you know, when I was involved heavily in the streets, it was a matter of, I was looking for people who were like me so that we could protect each other so that I wouldn't feel hurt so that I would feel safe. And that's why I chose those people and those choices. And now I understood that I'm the only person that can keep me safe. I'm the only person that can keep me secure. I'm the only person that can create stability and consistency in my life. And the people who I surround myself back to your comment of what if this person holds that against me, that's not a type of person you should have in your life. Yeah. Right. Because the people you choose to be around with Alex will have these conversations with you because they understand you. They know that you, they can have these conversations with you and they know that they're not going to hold that shit over you, but it's the people who you're choosing in your life to have that are doing those things that aren't healthy for you anymore. And it's like, sometimes it's coworkers. You can't really do shit about it. So don't take, take it at face level. Let them be a fucking immature person. But if it's somebody who's close to you and who's in a relationship with you, either romantically or in a friendship platonic way and they're doing that type of behavior man we can address it by saying hey I don't like this or by saying hey here's a boundary I don't like you doing this please tell me right away or just choose not to associate yourself with those people you have all those choices to make that you have full control over so one more thing I wanted to talk about is just uh you talked about somebody getting upset for not like if, if I love ranch dressing and I identify, like the, the concept that's weird to me is that what people choose to identify with so strongly that they have those feelings of being upset. And that can be politics or it can be something like freaking ranch dressing. <laughs> right, dude, it's fucking nuts. So, um, so I don't know, like, what is it the, uh, it's some, is it Dunbar's number? It's like the amount of things you can care about Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, and it's just like, I, I know, I think it's in the personal de the development world of like, you know, you got to choose. I mean, Mark Manson, what do you give a fuck about? Right. Um, like, what are you choosing to uh, care about? I know. And it's a matter of having a false sense of identity. And I fall yeah. victim of that too, where you don't know who you are or you identify with too much of your work or your lifestyle, whatever it may be. And for me as a human, um, I, I fall victim of those things. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I lose myself sometimes in egotism because it keeps you safe too. That's the number one thing is ego is good at times. Um, but for me, I no longer base my identity with the things I do. I base it with the values I hold. So for me at my root cause as a person, break me down, fire me from my job, lose my business, lose all my education. I have like, I'm fucking naked and have nothing else. I will still have the values of giving myself autonomy and others, being kind and gentle with myself and others, being accepting and understanding of myself and others and understanding that I'm a strong individual and that I love myself so much that I will always put myself first so that I can be there for others. So if I lose all the things I have materialistically, physically intent like mentally all that other shit as long as i still have the things that i live by every day you're not going to take anything away from me because the brands i wear the things i have don't make me it's my values how i hold myself and how i present myself and how i treat others 
and myself, more importantly, is who I am as an individual. I just think it's important that you should express yourself however way you want to uh, in a way that doesn't impact other people so that you can live a, a fucking wealthy life that you want because you know, you, you can look at all the people who have all the money in the world and it's not the fucking materialistic things that make them have a better life. It's the way that they get to live their life. And it's not based on the luxuries. It's based on how they can just be. Freedom. Yeah. yeah. And it's that mental freedom. Mental freedom is, is more important than fucking anything out there because when you're at peace with yourself, when you're accepting of yourself, you can change the world that you live in by changing the way you want to view it. You can view the world as a very cynical person, very scared, fearful person uh, like I used to, or you can decide to choose how to live differently in the world by accepting that there's abundancy in everything and that you can be a giving, loving person and still uh, receive and have the things that you want and be safe and secure, like all those things, like whatever reality you want to create and live in, you will do because it's your brain that creates it. I live life by life's terms. So I understand that I don't control anything except how I choose to respond to, uh, what I feel. I make a choice with me feeling upset with me feeling sad now, sometimes I'm not aware of it always, but as long as I'm aware of the behaviors that I'm choosing to make, then I understand that I'm living the life I want to make, I want to live. Yeah. Um, I just, I feel like that's a good place to wrap it up. I mean, I do want to, this would probably have to be another topic because it's deeper, but just like the Jordan Peterson concept of like the discovery of the future and bargaining with the future and like uh, just building off of what you're saying with like kind of creating the reality you want, but that's, that's probably its own topic. So. Dude, you gotta, you gotta make your own rules for life. Yeah. Like that's the thing is because you gotta begin with knowing yourself though, because like for me, I've always understood that I'm a person who does hard things. Like I do the hard things in life because they're not easy and I'm a person who does those things. So uh, for me, it's a challenge. It's, like growing up in the streets is a matter of uh, survival of the fittest and always having to prove something to everybody. And like, you think about it now, it's fucking ridiculous. I have to prove myself to somebody else by physically fighting them or being more assertive and aggressive. That's crazy, but that's the world that we live, that I used to live in. So in order for me to no longer believe in those beliefs and follow those paths and be with those people and all that other shit, I had to go and make my own reality, make my own world. And I was okay with it because I'm used to that. I'm used to being a person who can do difficult things and take the initiative to be like, I don't like this shit. I'm going to go do something else. And I don't care who does it with me. Like, you know, when I think of my gym, when I think of where I started to where I'm at now, when I first started that, I had no idea that three and a half years into my business, I'd have a business partner coming in and we'd do some real crazy shit together. I had no idea that I'd be doing what I'm doing now, creating systems, writing blogs. Like I just knew that I wanted to have a gym so that people could feel safe in, so that we could do proper training and I can give them the quality of service that they deserve. I just knew I had a feeling that that's what I wanted because I'm a big picture person. And from there, I just started putting pieces together by doing. And that's where people fall, is that you spend too much time planning and thinking, not enough time doing because you have to get it right. Fucking fail. Fail over and over and over so you can learn from it. Make mistakes because that's how progress happens. It's science. It's just easy. Scientific method. I have an idea. I'm going to collect information. I'm going to put this to test. I'm going to see what happens. And then I'm going to make a different, if the outcome comes out that I don't support it, then, okay, what needs to change about it? So it can be something I support, or it gives me, okay, I don't like this shit. Next thing. Yeah. It's ready, fire, aim. Like you start shooting and then you adjust. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
again for viewers. Uh, William it has restored strength in Marshall. He's an awesome trainer. It's group training, so you get to train with other people also going through the same kind of shit. And we'll be talking again soon about more big picture stuff. So. Dude, I'm excited. Our next talk will be good. Yeah. All right. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Alex. Have a great day.